Hey y'all, I hope everybody's doing good. Um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, make a video on the electrical system for th this horse trailer that I'm working on. Um, but it pretty much will apply to any RV, you know, trailer, camper, whatever. They're all pretty much wired the same into the same kind of breaker. Um, this is a 30 amp breaker right here that I bought. This uh, horse trailer was originally 110. And that 110 pretty much had one breaker and it powered the AC and one outlet. Um, and I needed to upgrade it so it can hold the load of the fridge and the microwave and the stove and all the other stuff that I'm going to add to it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the 12 volt side first and then I'll make a separate video with the 110 side. Uh, now for the 12 volt side, you see the breaker right here. Um, and then this right here is all the 12 volt side. So the 12 volt side has a bunch of wires coming out right here. And then you've got your fuses that are right here. So, uh, most of these should be the same. Um, if not, just send me a picture and I can try to help you sort through it. Uh, first things first is you're going to need, um, a 12 volt battery. And I have that outside, um, of the horse trailer in the front right now. But you have, I have my main positive power coming in, which is going to be attached to this first red wire that's right here. And then the negative coming in from the battery is going to go to the common ground, which is right here. So the negative um, from the battery is actually the one with the green on it. And then the negative from the breaker box is coming in to the same common ground. So don't hook them together, put them both in the common ground. Um, after that, you are going to have all these wires right here, and these are going to be all your separate 12 volt systems that you're going to have, um, which is why I have my fuses hooked up right here. You can just pick whatever size you kind of think. Um, so let's see. My first one is, um, it looks like lights. So basically you'll have a positive and a negative. Um, the positive is going to go right here hooked into one of the wires in your breaker and the negative is going to go to your common ground so it's going to be the same thing for every wire that you have coming into your 12 volt system so i have lights and then i have the lights and the fans that power the back where the horses are um, i've also got a um, hood range and this is also um, going to power the antenna so there's just a couple right there. Um, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory how to wire it. Um, and then I just kind of picked a size fuse that I thought would work. So let me go ahead and show you um, how I wired it um, inside the camper. And then we'll come back to that. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with the lights. Um, so this is where I started my lights at. And it comes up and it goes over 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 and then oops it comes over here and then it goes down to um, a split right here and then it goes back up and then it goes over to another light right here and then it goes back up into the wall and then it comes down right here um, and right here I have actually put in a switch so the switch is going to control um, all three of those lights. So the positive goes to the positive on the switch and then the two negatives go together. So right now it is off. Okay. And there's my light right there. And if I flip the switch, then it comes on. Um, now I do have one light that is right here that I did not wire into the switch. Um, and I did that because it's going to go underneath the cabinet and I wanted it to be controlled by itself just on the regular, um, you know, knob right there. You can switch it on and off. So that one actually comes, um, down from the box up into the wall. And this is on a separate 12 volt system. So it's got its own fuse and then it goes down and then it comes back up and then it goes over. And this is uh, the wire that the range hood is going to be connected to. And then I added one more up over, goes down into the wall, comes back out here. Now this one is going to be um, where the antenna is going to be hooked to. So I have the antenna for the 12 volt antenna hooked up right there. 
um, and that is all on its own separate fuse. So that one is wired separate from the lights. Now the last um, fuse that I have in there, the last connection that I have, um, I've only got three for the 12 volt, um, but if you have like a water pump or something like that, that'll be on a separate one as well. Um, so I wanted to hook the lights and the fans that are in the back for the horses to the system. And I also wanted to tie it in so when it's plugged in, it charges the battery in the front. So I plug the truck up, um, or I plug the horse trailer up to the truck, and I tested to see which wire had 12 volts coming in, and it ended up being one of my white wires up here. So I kind of made a little um, connection right there that goes down to my box, and then I also had to figure out which wire was the ground coming from the main plug, and I did the same thing. Um, so I connected a wire from the ground and I brought it down into the box into that common ground box that's down there. So now um, that we have this connection, the lights and stuff in the back will work when the truck is not plugged in or the caper is not plugged into the truck. Um, so note, I have a little connection right here um, and I'm actually going to redo that because I don't like it because most of you, but um, if you have a connection that's in the wall like this that you're not going to be able to get to, you're always going to want to solder it. Um, I do have a video on soldering, so definitely check that out if you don't know how to solder. Uh, but anything that's in a wall, definitely solder it because you're not going to want to, you know, put your panels in and your walls in and then all of a sudden something doesn't work and your wire nuts come loose and you got to take the whole wall back out again. So solder it so it doesn't come apart. and. Um, Another thing I do want to say is make sure that you don't have any loose connections like that in the wall. Um, so always use, you're, you're going to use a lot of wire. I'm just going to do that right now. You're going to use a lot of wire, um, but it, it's worth it because you see all of this is continual. And my, my splits are all at a place where I can get to them if I need to. So you're going to want to wire it where all of your splits like this are where you can get to it. Um, let's see. I think that's it. I think that's it for the 12 volt side. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Happy to help. Um, and check out the video on the 110 volt side that I'm fixing to do. Um, so hopefully you'll find that helpful too. Y'all have a good day.